Hey, welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to create a modal pop-up in a model-driven app without having to write any JavaScript. Let's dive right in. All right, so taking a look at my simple model-driven app, I know you guys are probably sick of the asset management uh, scenario that I keep going back to over and over, but here we are. So we've got this simple model-driven app uh, that shows my list of assets, and I also have a list of asset items. Now, I've also turned on this new capability within model-driven apps, the Power Apps Grid Control, and I have a little nested gallery here inside my model-driven app with all of the asset items for each item type. Now, what I've got right now is if I select one of these assets, I have a custom button that I've added to the command bar where I can decommission all of the child items. So if I go ahead and click that, it's going to do something, I think, but it never really tells me that it does it, never really notifies me. So if I open up this asset now, we'll see that all of them are marked as unavailable, which is exactly what I want. But that might be a little bit too easy for users to come in and select all of these and click decommission items. I probably want to add some sort of confirmation screen to this. If you are familiar with Canvas apps, if you're familiar with the PowerFX language, then you probably know how easy it is to create your own pop-up in a Canvas app. But how do we do that in a model-driven app if we don't have access to things like containers and showing and hiding visibility, things like that. In the past, we would have had to use custom JavaScript and add this to the command bar up here. However, now that we can build our own custom commands using PowerFX, we can also use a function that is not actually available in Canvas apps. This is only for model-driven apps, and that is the confirm function. So let's dive right in and take a look at how we use that. To go in and start editing your command bar, I'm gonna go back into the designer for this model-driven app, and I'm gonna to go to the list where my custom command currently lives. This is on the assets view. So I'm gonna go over to my tree view and I'll click the dot, dot, dot next to the assets view. And I'm gonna edit the command bar and I'm gonna do this in a new tab. Now, which command bar do we wanna edit for this view? We wanna do the main grid. That's the main view. So here's my decommission items button. This is my custom command that I created with PowerFX. And this is a personal preference thing, but when I'm creating my own custom commands, I like to select open the component library up here in the top right. Once this component opens up, you'll see that it's very similar to the Canvas app design experience where we can drag this formula bar down, we can create some more room, and it's just a little bit of a more familiar experience for those of us with extensive Canvas app backgrounds. The nice thing about opening this up in the component library is that we can also bring in alternate data sources. So because I have a command that is going in and editing all of the child items, I had to open the component library and bring in the asset items to this button, which actually sits in the assets grid. So taking a look at this formula, all it really does is it goes in and it finds all of the child items related to the items that I have selected in the model driven view. And for all of those, it patches that record and marks it as unavailable. Again, that's a little bit too easy for my users to do, and I don't want them to accidentally do something when they don't mean to. So what we can do is something called the confirm function. I'm gonna go up to the top and hit enter a few times just to give myself a little bit more room. And basically the outputs of the confirm action results in a true or a false statement. So because of that, I'm gonna put this inside of an if statement. So if confirm, and the first parameter for the confirm function is the text that we want displayed in the pop-up window. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this from somewhere that I have it written down. So the message will look something like this, just telling the user what this procedure does. This procedure is gonna make all the associated asset items unavailable. Then we can add some more to this, but it has to be in curly brackets. Additionally, we can specify a title for the message. We can specify a subtitle for this confirmation message, and we can specify our two buttons, uh, our confirm button and our cancel button. So for the title, this is what would be kind of at the top of the, the window, the top of the pop-up. 
I'll just say something simple like, wait, for the subtitle, I can make this something like, please confirm this action. And then for my two buttons, we can specify what we want those buttons to say. So I'm gonna say, I want the confirm button to say something like, okay. And I'll have the cancel button just say cancel. And I'll close my curly brackets and I'll close my parentheses for the confirm action. Now again, this is going to result in a true or a false statement. So if the user selects okay, that is gonna result in a true statement. So if I hit comma, remember I'm still in the if statement and now I'm on the true value of this if statement. So if it results in a true statement, then I want to perform the action that it was doing before where it marks all of the child items as unavailable. I can also add an additional action here. So after that procedure has been completed, I can do a notify and I can say something like all associated items marked as unavailable. And I would want that to be a success message. And we'll have that timeout after two and a half seconds. So now if I hit comma, I'm in the false value, I'm in the else value part of my if statement. And if they choose cancel and they don't wanna actually perform this procedure, I can just do a notify. Operation canceled. For the notification type, I'll just do information and I'll have that timeout after the same amount of time, two and a half seconds. Close my parentheses for the if statement. And I'm gonna save and I'm gonna publish this button. Now I'm gonna switch back to play mode in my model driven app. I'll do a hard refresh. It's letting me know that a new version of the app is available, so I have to refresh one more time. And let's give this a test. So let's go to the, the Legion 17s. And let's select this, and let's say we're gonna decommission these items. Now we get our pop-up message that says, wait, please confirm this action. This procedure is gonna make all associated asset items unavailable. Let's hit cancel just to make sure our notification works. Operation canceled, two and a half seconds, the message goes away. We'll try that one more time. Decommission items, this time we'll say okay. It's gonna take a second to refresh and then we'll get that notification, that successful notification that all associated items were marked as unavailable. We click this down arrow and we see that that is true. They're all marked as unavailable. So there you have it, that's all there is to it. No JavaScript was written, it was all done with PowerFX. And if you're interested in taking a little bit closer look at that formula, let me bring in a notepad over here and let's just walk through it. So let's take a closer look at that formula just so everyone feels confident to go ahead and start using it right away. It's very similar to the notify function within PowerApps. So we're gonna confirm and then we have to specify the message like are you sure? And then we can also specify some additional fields within this button. Things like the title, things like the subtitle, and also what we want our confirm button to say, and what we want our cancel button to say. Now, important to note is that this entire statement and what the user clicks on, whether they click the confirm button or the cancel button, if they click on the confirm button, that will result in a true statement. And if they click on the cancel button, that will result in a false statement. So knowing that, typically what you wanna do is put all of this inside of an if statement. So if the outputs of this is true, then do 
this stuff. And you can add a bunch of formulas and tell it what to do. Else, do this other thing. So hopefully that helps and gives you the confidence that you need to go in today and start adding confirmation pop-ups to your model-driven apps. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.